Welcome to Birdistan. Today we are going to discuss a beautiful bird. The bird's name is Indian Robin. Indian Robin is a very small bird that hops around, jumps around near houses, especially in suburban areas and in rural areas. Um, existence of it in the cities are, is not known as the food and the habitat that it is used to and likes to flourish is suburban and rural kind. So Indian Robin looks amazing. How do you know when you see it that you are seeing an Indian Robin? Indian Robin can be easily mistaken uh, for other birds as well. Let us discuss everything about Indian Robin in detail now. Uh, the look of the Indian Robin is basically brown color. It's a small bird so it is around 15 centimeters long. It has upright standing up tail. When it is uh, on the ground it can be mainly found on the ground looking for food, looking for insects, pecking on the ground. Spends a lot of time in fact on the ground and sometimes also found on the roofs of um, straw made hutments if you if you've seen those uh, especially in Indian villages uh, there are uh, homes that have straw made roofs on top of those roofs Indian Robin is found more commonly because it can get its grub from there uh, the appearance of a uh, northern Indian Robin especially the male ones and southern parts of Indian male Robin is slightly different the Indian male Robin that is found in the northern region is a uh, brown in color dark brown in color and the ones that are found in the southern region are slightly darker so they look black uh, the female and the male are slightly dimorphic not too much difference is there but enough difference for you to know which is the male and which is the female for the male uh, there is a white color stripe or a patch on both sides of the wings so when you see the Indian Robin, you know if there is a white patch or stripe on the wings, side of the wings, it is a male Indian Robin. And for the female, the stripes or the white patch is missing completely. So the female will look slaty brown color, not very uh, bright or you know dark brown color, but it's slaty mixed up with uh, blackish brown color. And the male is nice and brown with the white stripe. Although the southern ones are more darker in the shade than the northern ones. Uh, the juveniles look similar to the female but they will have a lighter color around the throat and they will have smears of dark brown color over there. When they perch or when they are on the ground, uh, their legs appear really thin and uh, weak rather with their tails standing upright and the tail coverts, under tail coverts are chestnut brown color. So when their tails are up, you can often see the uh, vent area or the undertail coverts and they are chestnut uh, red or chestnut brown color. With the female, the shade is little lighter. With the males, the shade is vibrant and bright. So this is how you can spot the Indian Robin. Uh, when you see them, they are pleasant to look at. They just are busy in their own uh, world. They are jumping, hopping, uh, at times uh, looking for some food, jumping just to grab an insect or something. They start the day early. They end the day very late, uh, moving around. Especially in the afternoons, they can be found in shade, shaded areas or you know places where direct sun is not falling. So this is how we can identify and spot Indian Robin. There are other birds as well that look similar to Indian Robin and you might get confused among them. Uh, another bird that looks very similar to Indian Robin is Pied Bush Chat. It almost looks, uh, you know, from a distance, you may get confused which one is what. But because of the undertail coverts of Indian Robin, it is very easy to differentiate between both of them. And also Oriental Magpie Robin that can come very close to the appearance of Indian Robin. Uh, that too from a distance. Uh, if those of you who have seen Oriental Magpie Robin as well as Indian Robin or even if you've not seen Indian Robin, you will know how uh, distinct Oriental Magpie Robin looks. Just because of the size and because of the way they perch, people get confused because uh, you know, Oriental Magpie Robin also tends to keep its tail upward, right upward, holding it up. Uh, but there is no uh, chestnut colored vent area or the undertail covert so that is a major differentiator apart from it being quite you know pied or uh, black and white Indian Robin is also called or known by several names across India uh, 
I, I'm sure you are uh, not watching from the same area as I am and uh, as all of you may be aware, especially our audience from India, uh, that every region, every uh, state, every locality may have their own way of expressing or naming certain things and they call those uh, birds, those animals by that name. So a certain name for an animal or a bird in one area may not be the same as another area. Same with India, Indian Robin. Uh, there are certain names that I can share with you right now uh, such as Bujain is one of the names for Indian Robin in certain part of the country. There is Kalchuri, also a name of Indian Robin. Devi Shama, Chirak, Fudki also is a name for Indian Robin. Fudki being something that I have personally known uh, and Fudki I know something that is very light in weight. Indian Robin weighs only between 15 to 17 grams. So it's pretty light like its body length is 15 centimeters and the weight is also between 15 to 17 grams. So it is that light and when it is on the ground it's literally as if it is floating it's ready to bounce. It's that light. It uh, hops, it uh, takes small fly, uh, you know, uh, leaps, you can say, uh, between one place to the uh, to another on the ground. So it's very light. Because of that, perhaps people call it Fudki. Something that Fudak Fudakke, it keeps moving. Fudak Fudakke is hopping with a light feet, hopping from one place to another. That could justify its name as being Fudki. The sound that Indian Robin makes is pretty similar to Oriental Magpie Robin. But it is... Sh uh, shorter in length as well as uh, much softer in the sound so it sounds very pleasant just like oriental magpie robin uh, i i'm sure those of you who have ever heard oriental magpie singing especially during uh, mating season uh, when they are uh, finding or looking for partners and they are establishing their uh, communication and uh, partnership uh, you know how beautiful they sing. Uh, the name also is Solori in India. So they sing lots and lots of songs. Uh, they have so many tunes that they can go on and on. Uh, we, get, we are very fortunate, uh, me and my family. Uh, where we live, we have many, uh, a few Oriental Magpie Robins and they sing at length. They can go on and on and on. We try to spot them also. Sometimes it, it, they are easily spotted. But Indian Robins is something that we don't have in our locality and uh, reason being because we are living in proper urban area or city we are not living in suburban area so i have not personally uh, experienced in reality the sound of indian robin but i have uh, checked it out online and it is much milder softer shorter notes but very similar compared to the oriental magpie robin very very pleasant on the ears when they sing and it sounds amazing Now, where do we find Indian Robin? If you are visiting villages, you are visiting rural areas, or you're just getting outside the city boundaries, going into the outskirts, it is very common to find Indian Robin. In fact, it will be one of the common birds that you will uh, see, you will witness uh, around the day. You will see them. Uh, they are uh, their habitat, or you know, typical habitat where they like being because they get enough food and it's safer for them. Is open grazing fields or grazing areas where uh, cattle and all are grazing they like to be in those areas because not too many tall or dense uh, or jungle or trees around them uh, they like to live in open areas wherever human habitation is there there you will find Indian Robin uh, they are very compatible to human hab habitation and because of that you will mostly find them in scrubs also you will find them and they are resident to Indian subcontinent so they are not found anywhere else in the world apart from Indian subcontinent uh, countries uh, like our country India, Nepal, uh, Bhutan, Bangladesh, Pakistan and Sri Lanka. These are the few places where you can spot them not in other places. There were attempts made although to introduce Indian Robin in other countries uh, like in New York there was an attempt made but it did not last over there. It was a failed attempt. Uh, same way in different locations if people may have tried it may have failed it's a small bird so people may think uh, or you know the, uh, the habits or the diet is very similar to so many other birds that are insectivore but this one does not fit in in those locations it could be maybe because of the uh, temperature it could be i don't know because of the location whatever may be the reason but it did not do well whenever there were attempts made to introduce it to another country it does pretty well in our country and it's home 
is where we are. So we should consider it special because it likes to be here and it looks amazing. It's just a beautiful bird. Sometimes it can be in danger if uh, you know it's not careful. Uh, we'll discuss about the dangers or threats of it as well, which are way too many. But this bird is truly amazing. Once you see it, you will know why I'm saying it. Uh, you just have to observe the way it behaves and it's just amazingly beautiful bird to look at. They can eat mostly almost all insects and also eat uh, small frogs, small lizards, anything that they can actually fit in, in their bill or the beak. So small uh, moving things like lizards, frogs, insects are their favorite grub. Uh, they are, as I mentioned earlier as well, they are found on top of the straw made roofs because that is a place where they find abundant of them. Uh, so for them food is not a problem, they can find it very easily, especially in rural areas and in uh, shrubs etc. It's easily found. And uh, their eating, uh, their foraging goes on till literally late in the evenings. Even once the lights are put on by people or the lanterns, they like to eat if, uh, from there too because there the insects get attracted towards the light and these birds can easily find the insects and eat. So they start from morning and they go on to late night eating or foraging for their food. This is what they eat and they live on when it comes to their diet. The mating and the breeding season of the Indian Robin it mainly starts with the rains or the monsoon in India. So uh, depending upon when monsoon begins in whatever region you are or Indian Robin is, that is when their mating season will begin. Uh, so they follow the monsoon pattern or start arrival of the monsoon. Uh, so uh, during the monsoon season uh, or before that they start being pretty vocal just like oriental magpie robins. Uh, they are trying to uh, get a mate for themselves, the male Indian Robin and they uh, try to uh, do a lot of uh, courtship rituals also to find a suitable male and lure females uh, towards them. Uh, they sing different songs during this time and the songs are not only sung to attract a female, a possible female bait, but also to repel other males from the area. So wherever they are, they are pretty ter territorial at this time, otherwise they are okay. Otherwise, they uh, they can be very social even with males. But during the mating season, they are highly aggressive, very, very fierce towards other males. So they try to keep other males away as far as possible. Uh, they don't like to share the uh, area where they are and they are trying to find another mate. So they sing for dual reason. One is to lure a female mate and other to repel males from that locality or area. So they can uh, have fights uh, often uh, two males of Indian Robin just like Oriental uh, Magpie Robin uh, to remind you. Both of their, their behavior when it comes to breeding and mating is pretty similar. Uh, during uh, the courtship rituals they can show their uh, fluff their undertail coverts to show the female. They can show their sides maybe just to show how beautiful or they are unique they are the white stripe or the patch to the female they also spread their tail feathers and show it uh, so these are uh, they also strutter ar around the female so they try to grab as much attention of the female as possible to attract them and cement a relationship between a female uh, uh, and themselves so that they can have a good mating season between both of them and now uh, uh, the you know uh, sometimes people have also experienced that these birds come slamming at the windows and people don't know why why would birds do that uh, didn't they see a lot of times people think that uh, because birds can't see or perhaps they didn't see there was a window or because of the glass reflection they came and they hit themselves they aren't doing that for that they are actually doing it to attack another male possible male because when they see their own reflection in the window uh, they think it's another male that has not left the area yet or the territory and it is trying to get back to that male and thus they come slamming at the windows. When it comes to nest building and the location of the nest, Indian Robin is very very careful. It goes for locations which can be safer and away from threats, possible threats. Threats can be several for Indian Robin and its nest. Uh, snakes are a possible threat. Lizards are a possible threat. Bigger birds like crows, rufous tree pies, they are all a threat to Indian robin's nest. 
So to build it, it finds a proper, a suitable location, a safer location. A location can be in a tree hole or can be uh, inside a hole of the wall in villages. Its, uh, its nest is often found inside homes also, just like sparrows are found. Uh, so it chooses a location that can be cozy, that can be silent, that can be safer. That is not visited by, uh, you know, a lot of, uh, or there are no much activities around the area. Uh, it also chooses uh, a s small, you know, space between the roof and the ce uh, sorry, the ceiling and the walls sometimes. Uh, then the choice of material for the nest is uh, usual, straws, sticks, uh, dry hay, feathers, so soft materials for the nest. And the female will lay, after the nest building is uh, done, the female will lay eggs. It lays around three to four eggs at a time, which are around two centimeters. That is what the size of the egg is. And also the color of the egg can be bluish to whitish also. So the color varies generally. The time the eggs take to hatch and come, uh, become uh, hatchling is between 12 to 14 days. So the major part of the incubation is done mainly by the female. But once the eggs have hatched after the incubation, then male also plays a, you know, a, a good contribution uh, role in the feeding and the care of the hatchlings. Male is solely responsible for all the food that is required for the female and the hatchlings till the whole process is over. That is how they raise their brood every time. And also once this nest is made, they can use the same nest for the next brood season also or for the next cycle as well if it lasts if it is not damaged or not taken over by any other bird then they there is a possibility that indian robin will use the same nest for the next brood as well when it comes to threats and dangers to indian robin you would not be surprised to know that there are plenty there are plenty as it comes with small birds uh, so indian robin is no different it is not immune to the dangers that are around it whether it is cats rats snakes other bigger birds almost all of these things pose a possible threat to the bird uh, especially snakes are known to hunt indian robin because they are easily found on the ground so and uh, because of its active uh, schedule all day long indian robin is found uh, in uh, all of the locations where snakes like to hunt for their food. Um, I have personally seen, you won't believe, I have seen the snake chasing Indian Robin and uh, that was uh, something that we did not like. Uh, we were on our vacation and uh, uh, sitting just uh, in the afternoon. It was afternoon, proper afternoon. It was sunny and very bright and looking outside, uh, just blindly looking outside uh, uh, at the scenery and uh, there you see a snake. I only noticed the snake first but when I noticed the snake I see why the snake and the reason for the snake was it was trying to chase an Indian robin and this uh, how once a foolish but naive little bird wouldn't fly high it was still hopping and trying to escape the snake. Luckily it made it that day it wasn't uh, eaten by the snake uh, but every time it is not going to be that lucky. Uh, so that day uh, fortunately, the Indian robin was not a prey of the snake, but uh, it must be very common for snakes to grab them and eat them and they are just the right size for common snake in India. Uh, so these are, you know, threats to Indian robin. Uh, although, apart from all of these dangers that nature poses because of its, uh, you know, basic nature of the bird, uh, still the population is a very good it is least concerned, it is not under any other threat apart from their own, uh, you know, uh, natural threats that is created. Uh, so Indian Robin is flourishing well, it is doing well. Uh, per, uh, per, fee, uh, per one female, there are 1.5 males rather uh, in India or, or in the subcontinent. So they, there are good numbers of the bird uh, in that aspect. Uh, that's all for this uh, video on Indian Robin. Uh, we also write articles on these birds in detail so certain things that get missed out during the video they may may be part of the article as well so you can read those articles on kuristan.com but that's all for this video thank you for watching